I don't know what it was. He's walking upright like a man. Sightings in and around Vermont. Bigfoot sightings across New England have been reported. Red glowing eyes, about seven feet tall. Red eyes, big old fang claws coming out through. Three inches long, you know, just sharp as they could be. There has been another UFO sighting flying over the Royal Botanic Gardens. There are 500 UFO sightings in the world every month. The truth is out there. Uh, and I'm excited to welcome everyone to Technical <sighs> Difficulties Part 3. Hey, at least I didn't need to fucking move a computer this time. This t- <laughs> it's true. Because <laughs> the first time Technical Difficulties strike struck i needed to move an entire computer (laughs) the second time i don't even remember what happened and this time i didn't move a knob yeah the (laughs) your your let's make sound knob was turned all the way to infinity zero (laughs) yeah negative infinity oh It it was it was real smart of me, real good. Also, you might notice my voice doesn't have that little hiss that it, it's been having. That's because John's an idiot. <laughs> we fixed a knob. We fixed a slider. We're using a different uh, vo- video software. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I had, I had set a slider in my sound like card to basically augment all my audio like really hardcore (laughs) didn't need to do that um and as a result i had really 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 hissy audio which explains why the episode of toy office that i had made a few months ago never made it to the air because of the audio problem so yeah (laughs) <laughs> i'm having a good yep. i'm having a good uh what is this saturday saturday it's a, it's a brilliant saturday <laughs> yeah it's saturday march 20th brandon posted a, a picture of me realizing the problem to both the discord and twitter it was the perfect face it was the most perfect face the yeah. exact moment of realization and pain <laughs> it, it was the two pretty- becoming one it was pretty good. I'm not not gonna lie at all. It was, it was <sighs> horrifying. It was fantastic. Now, on the topic of technical difficulties, on uh, Monday, mm-hmm. Erica's uh, transmission goes, and it's like the CVT kind. I don't yep, know yep. what that means, but as soon as car people start talking and that comes up, they're like, the first question is how much is left on the car. So. She takes my Wait, car. How much is what left on the left car? Left on the car. Like, it's not worth it to fix it. Just buy a new car if a CBT oh. goes. And um, okay. so she takes my car to work because I work first shift. She works second shift on Mondays. Mm-hmm. 1030 at night, I get a phone call. Guess whose car isn't working? This guy's. God damn it. So she gets a ride home the day after. I get a ride out to the to where she works. Pop mm-hmm. the key in the ignition. Perfect. Works perfect. No problem at all. I start oh. driving, and then just before I get to the Kingston Rhinecliff bridge on the Rhinecliff side. Oh, no. Guess whose alternator dies? Oh, no. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I died in oh, the middle of the road no. there. Which, and I've got which, a f- all right. Yeah. How close, how close to the bridge did it die? It, it died close enough, to, you know, where there's like parking lots and big shoulders on one side? Yeah. I was able to take my flashlight and wire that to the car battery, and that gave the car enough juice to cross the street and get to a shoulder. <laughs> so I used a flashlight to drive to the other side of the road. My father-in-law came out, took out the alternator, we went, got a new one, and put in a brand new alternator on the just before the bridge. <laughs> Oh my god, Brandon. That has got to be some of the worst fucking luck I have ever heard of in my life. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's terrible luck. Yeah, I started what? the car and I was like, it works fine. <laughs> what a terrible night to have a curse. Oh yeah. Cause my car does weird stuff when it's cold, so I chalked up not working when it was freezing you know, like like below freezing. Like, oh that's it the car's cold. Nope, it was the alternator. <laughs> That's that's something you don't usually hear in a non-diesel car. 
Yeah, yeah. It's also the first time we really had any issues with the car in, in uh, 11 years. So I, I was due for something to go. I, I do remember when you got that car because the previous car had a string set up to open the... Uh, oh, yeah. To open the... the, the, the so it could uh, fill with gas. Was it, it was there was a there was string for the gas uh, and cap the trunk and the trunk as well. Yeah, yeah. So it was uh, it was a very what you would call it thing. I, I I remember you being surprised that you could get any money for it from the dealer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I did have a, a setup of multiple strings running the length of the car, and you pull on one to pop the trunk, and you pull on the other one to open the gas cap. I mean, that's basically what wires are, just with yeah. electrons. I, I of, made uh, mechanical wires. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Stupid electricity keeps screwing up. Oh, God. I, that car was a car, to say the least. It was a car. I kind of miss it a little bit. Uh, I, I kind of miss it a little bit. And also, if... So the good news is... Well, the good... Also, the transmission was out of warranty, but the company said that they'd cover ninety percent of the cost, so that we come out oh, fine on that. That's really nice. That that's Actually, that that's uh, that's uncharacteristic of a car company. If I'm going to be completely honest with you, I was not expecting that because if I worked for a company and someone said, "Hey, this expensive thing broke and it's out of warranty," my response to them would be, "That sucks. It's out of warranty." Yeah, pretty much. Especially if I was like just an employee oh like, yeah well, I'd be like so, yeah so, this this is not a fight i'm willing to make so the employee when you call the place was like ah uh, shit we can't do that but if you call the corporate office they might be able to so then we called the corporate office they opened something and then they communicated back to that other place and then they did some tests that they charge you a hundred dollars to make sure the thing that you said doesn't work really doesn't work and then they went back to corporate and they said we'll cover 90 percent of the cost Oh God! Yeah, but if if uh, it was also ninety percent of the cost is still approaching like so ninety percent of the cost include parts and labor, but then there's a couple other little things. We're not that far from. I would kind of almost rather make a down payment. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. How old is the uh, how is how old is the car that the transmission it's a went 2014. on? Twenty fourteen. What purchased new? Are you serious? Yep. It was a, a 2014 purchase new uh, Nissan uh, Sentra. But the problem is it's a CVT transmission. This is all stuff mm. you only learn after because you don't know about cars and then something expensive breaks. Turns out that's the expensive kind that doesn't last that long. And I think that's why any time if you go look at any Nissan Sentra, it says that. And then in little letters next to it, CVT. Yeah... It means, hey, I'm going to break in 85,000 miles on the nose. So welcome, everyone, to the podcast who uh, isn't an adult. Yeah. Welcome to Car Talk. Yeah. I, I, I still miss my Honda. Like, desperately miss that car. <sighs> I miss having a six-cylinder, but I don't miss it paying for the gas prices. Oh, Car Talk, <clears throat> which was also a real radio show that's no longer on. My favorite, it's people would call this radio show and go, my car is doing this. And then they diagnose it and they're, fu they're two brothers and they're funny. There was mm -hmm. one lady, no problem. She was an older woman, no problem with her car, but she liked to look at young college boys working on cars. So she would frequently drive her car to a college campus. And then she wanted to know what parts are easy enough to fix that she could like air quote, break them. To have a boy fix them. What? I was dying. Yeah, yeah the, the recording's is, still out this there. This is... Huh. That's, like... Like, she knew how to, like... Questionable. Like, she knew how to, like, loosen up the lug on a car battery so it wouldn't work and, like, you know, fuck with the headlight so the he one headlight wouldn't come on and stuff like that. So she's looking for, like, a little bit more involved ways to, like, air quotes, <sighs> break her car. I... God damn it. <laughs> favorite episode of car talk i ever heard that was back when oh, i was working at the, the no. farming place that's that's like borderline for me like in terms of uh questionability and like pushing oh, no. the, the limits of like okay things to do that that's that's her version of like the creepy old guy going to the gym honestly yeah well that's the other thing too like uh we tolerate 
like we we tolerate old people doing terrible things quite a bit, and we tolerate it, 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 it. It's 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 strange to me. <laughs> it is. Me. Can I just say it's just strange? I don't I don't get it. I don't like it. It makes me sad. Yeah. <laughs> That the, everything that you've told me, Brandon, has just made me sad, and I'm just I'm kind of living through sad right now. That that's p- almost my goal in life. That's sort of what we my my yeah. I don't no. I, I, and you know this that when I play games with people, the my object is not to win the game. No, because I know no, that's it's, not very it's likely. Not, it's my not. object is to have as much fun through causing them some form of anguish. As somebody who has been on the receiving end of your anguish, yes, that is a hundred and ten percent your objective. Anytime Indeed. you play a game, yep. It, it's it's upsetting. It's deeply upsetting. Um, so just just know that, folks. It is. That's also part of. Also, what really got me back into that is sort of your fault because you took me to a Friday Night Magic, <laughs> in which I won by accident. And uh, made someone throw his very expensive deck of cards. And then also I got to watch that person individually pick up that expensive deck of cards. While drinking apple cider vinegar. Yes. And I used a $20 pre-made deck that I purchased the same day. Yep. <laughs> he was upset. Yup. He, like, he had like a, a full play set of Snapcaster Mages. Yeah, he had four Snapcaster which... Mages. They were $50 a piece at the time. So he had four mm-hmm. cards in the deck combined uh two hundred dollars. Yeah, it, it was it was pretty it was pretty wonderful, I'm not gonna lie. It was the best way because before I played during like Ice Age and Splinter and then I haven't played and then I got back um right around uh just before Avison restored. And well, uh it was, it was uh the best it was time. Dark Ascension that we yes, started. Yes, Dark Ascension. Yep. We played we played Dark Ascension to Avison Restored, took a break, then we started playing Magic Arena on this podcast publicly was when we started playing magic again. Um, yeah. Although and... I'd love for a new onset to come out. Cause I, I would, even though I'm trying to be more responsible with money, I would definitely buy a box or two of a new onset. Just to, I still have a deck I made specifically to play against you. Onsets are just fun though. So like that, that's yeah. fine. Onsets are just like good fun. Yeah. Um, they reissued. They released a, a remaster of Time Spiral, the Time Spiral block, as a single set, and oh, I picked okay. up two packs yesterday. And like, I just got sadness out of it. But I did pull two slivers, Brandon. Oh, and <laughs> I was super happy to pull them. I just nice slivers are super fun for me. But they are. Um, so if you made it this far. Let me welcome you to Cryptopedia, an exploration of the myths and legends that haunt the human mind. Each week, we will take you on a journey exploring the mysteries of the world, tackling the tales of monsters, folklore, the paranormal, and that thing that definitely lives under your bed. I'm Brandon. I'm John. And, um, yeah, I had a very eventful two weeks, so I did not write, or didn't have time to write a copy this week, which means we're using my backup copy! Hooray, backup copy. The copy that I write... So that in case I can't write one or forget, I still got one. Uh, I I I envy you having a backup copy. <laughs> yeah, I, this 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 should be a fun episode. Um, How long ago did you write this? I don't know, and I it was so long ago that I was scrolling through, through a spreadsheet, and I was like, I have to have used this one before because I wasn't convinced I didn't already talk about it. Um, uh-huh. But according to the spreadsheet, I didn't. <laughs> Uh, and if not, I have another backup. Um, uh, all right, just, just drop that in the folder and I'll take a look at it. Oh, I'll no, no, we got to play. I don't, I don't move anything to our folder until we play the guessing game, John. All right, John, we got to play right. the guessing game. Let's this will also be fun because I'll be learning about this again at the same time as you. <laughs> uh, today's creature was first seen in 1864. It's tiger-esque in appearance. It roams Australia and it was last supposedly seen in 2012. Any guesses? Tasmanian tiger? That's not Australia, but Tasmanian tiger is the one that jumps to head mine. I know that's... I know it's in Tasmania. The I'm going to give you half thylacinth? credit. I'm going to give you half... 
thylacine yeah thylacine all right yeah. th- all right good good so let me move later you think i'd be able to move my folders faster and hit and move making and noise move. there we go you fell into my trap you fool yes so my goal was to make you guess thylacine you're closer with whatever tiger um oh see, it's, I, a, it's an alien big cat story okay it, it's Basically. it's 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 like it's not this it's half, half an alien big cat because it's a thylacine, the exact same story of the thylacine, so it's not necessarily alien. Okay. So it, it's uh, it's not the thylacine, a.k.a. the Tasmanian tiger, but the very similar but very different Queensland tiger. I also want to point something out, Brandon. Yes. And why I deserve half, half credit. You fully deserve I, half credit. I did say that the Tasmanian tiger is not Australian, but Tasmanian. That true, 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 true. I did, I did say that it wasn't from mainland Australia, so that's that is my justification for half credit. Yes. Um, okay. So let's see. Let 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 let's get to some physical descriptions. This thing is described as weighing one heavy Brandon in mass, but a dense boy, uh, just over uh, half Brandon long from head to tail, and about half a Brandon tall. They could, so however, get me. as large as 1.6 heavy Brandons in weight. It's basically me. It is ba- It's a John. It's basically a John. It's a John. <laughs> this it's is perfect. Just, I was roaming Australia back in the 1800s. Um, it's it's a very little known fact about me. You flew out for a ska concert and started a whole flap, and uh, th- they'll really never be the same at the Gold Coast. Yeah, I mean, I was, I was, I was like way above ahead of that shit. I was waiting for the Scott concerts to start in, in uh, Australia. There's um, long overdue. Yeah, I don't know of any like. Now that I think of it, I don't know of any standout Australian ska bands. But I uh, kind of want to listen to Australian ska now. Real big fish. Definitely not. No, the I was all nighters. Up. Let's see the porkers. Okay, I like that right off the bat. Uh, Spy vs. Spy, the Bennies, Moldy and the Lovers. Sounds like chicken. Uh, the Melbourne, Melbourne Ska Scott. Orchestra. Yes. What is this? Skip ads. I need to hear it. <laughs> oh, they're wearing the black suits with the the trilbies. Oh, they're fantastic. doing the thing. They're doing the thing. Oh, I see a uh, uh, thumbnail of people dancing. Um, let's see. Its hind legs were shorter than its arms, and it had retractable claws like that of a kitty, but was some, like, fucked up opposable hook. And uh, it speculated that this danger ball could murder a thing and then drag it into trees, much like a, an actual tiger. <clears throat> Ooh. Ooh, yes. That's pretty, pretty gnarly. It is gnarly, and it... I can't think of another animal where, like, its legs are different lengths. I don't know if that's true for bears. I know, like, that's uh, a bears, story people I, tell you, but I don't know if that's like, necessarily true. I'm, like, 10% sure bears are like that. Oh, okay. Uh, let's see. It had brown fur with a distinct pattern on his back. This is the same striped pattern, if you're familiar with the thylacine or the Tasmanian tiger. Like, the same kind of, like, strippy stripies. Uh, this creature I find interesting because it it has many similarities to the thylacine. Uh, however, the last thylacine or Tasmanian tiger was named Benjamin and died in 1936 in captivity, uh, 130 years after the first European settlement was established in Tasmania and subsequently hunted them to extinction. Um, well, both are rumored to believe be... if you believe the mainstream media. Yeah, the mainstream media. media. <laughs> uh, there is, there is, uh, there was something. So, like, um, recently I came across it, and they, it was a, a was it the troll like, cam? Yeah, there was like a trail cam that they were claiming that there was a uh, they were going to release something about the Tasmanian tiger. Yeah, and then that time it, came and went, and they never released it. Yeah, it turned out it it there wasn't a thing. <laughs> that that was very recently though, within the last like month, super I would say. recent. Yeah, 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 yeah. It turned out not to be a thing. It was also from a guy who has a 
long history of doing that thing <laughs> where it's like a proof of a thylacine and then he comes out and he, and nah i have i have heard rumors of thylacines being seen but that's anecdotal evidence so yeah same same and it's not crazy to think like maybe they caught on after being nearly hunted to extinction like let's not let these humans see us i i think i think part of the problem though is like statistically speaking like the every year that it's not like one isn't found it just becomes less likely because yeah. tasmania is not that big of an island that's part of the problem um it's not that big in that <clears throat> that might be almost like a logarithmic like that's not. Uh, I feel like that's probably a non-linear thing. For like each year goes that goes by without seeing a thing, the more likely the thing is that the thing isn't a thing. Yeah, no, it's it's not linear at all because like just like a rule of large numbers. Like I know that there's probably a fair amount of like unexplored, unvisited forest in like uh, no man's lands, but still like. You'd expect to find something on a beach, something uh, eventually one would encroach into a human habitat. It's Yeah, and, and there it, it, are it, new species found frequently all the time. Um, but the problem is, no, not the problem. The thing about these species, new species is that they're so similar in appearance to other known species. It was just for a very long time we assumed they, they were the same or it was a different color pattern. And then after they do some more research, they go, oh, no, they're actually different. They're not just this thing, but, you know, a different color or with an extra well, yeah. tooth. And, and, then, and then the other thing, Tasmanian tigers are predators, right? So yeah, any, any animal that is either a predator or a scavenger, you're very likely to see them encroach on human territory. Um, Let's just, just say because... it wasn't a dingo that took that baby. No, it was bad parenting that took that baby. It was bad um, parenting. <laughs> even if it was a dingo, it's still bad parenting. <laughs> so we're covered either way. It was... Oh, I, oh, random thought. Okay, and then I promise we'll get back... Um, People who okay. complain that we do tangents too much. Also, well, that guy doesn't listen to the podcast. Yeah, anymore, statistically, so. you're wrong. Um, we have the data. So they were talking about um, that movie, 127 Hours at Work. Uh, the one with James Franco. The one with James, James Franco, Franco where yeah. the guy like cuts through his arm with a pen knife. Yeah. So they were talking about it, and I don't know why I said it, but I was like. That's the worst way to find out how many licks it takes to get to the center of a Tootsie Pop. And that got a very strong reaction from a lot of people. Now, when you say a strong reaction, Brandon, strong as in, like, revulsion or strong as in just pure joy? So it wasn't pure... So you know how there's the... the, Because that's pure joy from me. There's the kind of laugh when something's like, ha, 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 funny, but... it was a, like a simultaneous, like, oh, like that kind of thing. Where, where, where like, a, oh, like that's funny, but I don't know if I should be, let people know I think it's funny. I mean, it's, I, is that story based on a true story? I oh, it I, is. Okay. It I is. Mean, the dude, the dude was an idiot in the first place. Cause I think if my memory is correct, he went out without telling anyone where he was going. You go out, you know, you do, you, yeah. you go out alone and you don't tell anybody anything and you don't take safety precautions and whatever it's very into the wild esque yeah or like any time or like anything that ever happens to someone that privately owns a bear or a monkey oh yeah no no very very much so It, it, it anytime somebody like anytime someone looks at someone and says listen this is a terrible idea and then the person proceeds to go and do it i have no uh empathy sympathy whatever word you want to call it for that human being oh yeah yeah i mean i feel the same like i'll do stupid shit and then get hurt and i'll be like that was dumb and on me because i've gotten hurt plenty of times in the workshop and uh (laughs) cutting corners and like oh that was on me yeah that was dumb like i really feel like they should whenever like a high school teaches into the wild they should really like throw some major, major like what this kid was fuck kid did was fucking stupid. They, Do they not sh- be like him. 
they they really need to do do a lot more of um let's see the 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 way to think through a problem so like here's what this kid did beforehand here's the thought process that should have happened then also show way more graphic aftermath <laughs> yeah yeah he, really uh, hammer that home well the other thing too is it wasn't even the really the berries that killed them it was his own stupidity and not understanding about like how to eat on the frontier Cause like yeah, <laughs> I get your point. Uh, let's Scurvy. see. Uh, it it is also at this point I would like to clarify some terminology because Australians are not to be trusted. This creature is known by three names: the, the Queensland tiger, the marsupial lion, and the thylacleo. thylacleo uh, literally meaning pouch lion. Um, I fucking love that. Yeah, I like a pouch line. Um, uh, listen, I want to hop in that pouch line's little pouch right there. Oh, it'd be so nice right. just to curl up in like a big lion pouch. It it would be very it would be very tauntaun esque though. That's not that that pouch is not like a place you want to be. There's to be as long as it was kept clean, I'd like to curl up in there with my Nintendo Switch. How, how are you gonna clean up? How are you gonna? Cl- how are you going to clean that lion's pouch is my question. Cause like lion's not going to let you get near it with some light lemon pledge. I'm going to tell you that right That's now. The same way I trick my cats into letting me brush them. You start with the belly rubs and then you slowly substitute your hand for a brush. Brandon, your cats are not normal cats. You no. never like my cat. I could never even belly rub anytime, much less comb it. Brush it. <laughs> he likes getting his back brushed, but a very particular way. If I deviate from that at all, he gets mad at me. Yeah. It's a very so, sharp boy. He's a very sharp boy. Uh, before I dive into it, the first ever recorded uh, evidence was teeth found by Richard Owen, who looks like a low to mid-level necromancer. He um, definitely does. Oh, he definitely, definitely does. He, he uh, looks more like... He looks like the... The way that people describe Aleister Crowley, well, well, the the myth of Al- that Aleister Crowley built up for himself, he looks more like the myth of Aleister Crowley. He looks than like the Aleister Crowley actually looked. Yes, he looks like a guy that never got out of that phase of reading too much Edgar Allan Poe in school, and he just kind of grew up and lived that way. Yeah, that's that's yeah. about it. Although he he could have been he could have been friends with Edgar. Allan Oh, practically. Oh, that's true. Oh, maybe he was. Um, mm, yeah, I think my, actually, I think Edward Allan Poe would have been dead by then. Yeah, and Richard Owen wrote something. Uh, I shall reduce to, "Hey, I found some cool teeth, and I have a staff made of bones to distract you from my receding hairline." In 1859. <laughs> 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 In uh, 2002, I, I, yeah. Isn't isn't that what having a anything made out of bones is really for in the first place? Oh yeah, I mean any he's... any affectation for men is just to distract from the fact that they have a receding hairline. He has a cape and a bone staff. There's there's no way that's not trying to distract you from something. Yeah. In 2002, a group of pretty intact skeletons were found because eight thyla- thylacleo fell into a hole deep enough where they could uh where they did not die but also uh could not get out and starve to death jesus (laughs) this fell into a uh, a pit where they wouldn't die from the fall but they couldn't get any food um oh no that's very that's very like guys carl carl fell in the hole we got to get him out Oh no! It was just Shit. a series of Dennis failed rescue missions. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then the last one's just like, "You guys are fucking idiots. I'm gone." Yeah. See, ya. he's like, "I'm out, ski man." He, um, lastly, in 2008, uh, an ancient cave painting was found, and there is some debate whether it is the Tasmanian tiger or the Queensland tiger. Um, I'll lean Queensland tiger uh, because it has a stubby nose. And the, the thylacine had, like, a long a long nose, not a stubby nose. Yeah. Um, and ancient cave painters... Uh, wow, what the hell did I write here? Licenses which uh, to view or... Uh, oh, I'm just saying they're bad drawers. 
Like they, they definitely skipped art class because it's still could kind of be anything else. Um, I mean, this is there to be fair to the ancient cave painters. It's pre perspective, like that. Yeah, that uh, things that we think are like basics are things that we discovered at one point, and they've just entered the zeitgeist so much that now we can like understand those things like i mean the concept of zero didn't show up for a very long time yeah i i would also like to point out i think this is a boy because if you look where the tail meets the body there's some dingly it looks like bits testes. it looks like yep. some testicles so uh thylacleo um i i choose to believe had a big old set of nuts um some did yeah some didn't the ones that were on thylacleo steroids no were not yeah. as big they, they had some problems. They had a, a series of issues. Uh, the yeah. earliest dated sighting, and perhaps my favorite, comes from the, the proceedings of the Zoological Society of London addressing a letter written to them by one Walter J. Scott in December 4th of 1871. In excerpt, uh, he said, As to the tiger, I am inclined to think uh, there really is some large carnivorous animal as of yet undescribed in this neighborhood. A licensed surveyor was uh, lately at work with a party of five men. They were laying in tents one night, and between eight and nine o'clock, they were startled by a loud roar. By the time they seized their guns, the animal had departed. I send you a drawing of the track. Uh, the drawing was a very faithful one. Brennan. Yes. That was a very intense story. It was was a very intense story? Oh, Jesus. Intense story. It was intense. <sighs> The, the 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 I just heard the earth groan. Good, <laughs> good. I wanna I, I I live off of the suffering of others through puns. Uh, Everyone yeah. who has ever told a pun has grown stronger from that pun. As what they, doesn't they... kill us makes us stronger. No, 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 no. It slowly kills everyone who hears it, but it makes you strong. Oh, like a vampire, like the mm-hmm. toe sucking Bigfoot. Like, yeah, like toe sucking Bigfoot. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Like when you said toe sucking <sighs> Bigfoot, it's the exact same thing that you got from toe sucking Bigfoot. I've got to start either like a mix. I have to write a a, a punk slash country song called Toe Sucking Bigfoot because I think that might be perfect. I don't know what it would be about. What is a punk country mix? I don't know. I'm thinking maybe a little bit heavier. I, I, I'm almost I, I in the like, vein of like I, Maylene and the Sons of Disaster. But I feel like I don't really see punk. I, I, all right. I guess I was thinking of ska. Oh, Sorry, you, you might. I, I was thinking my, of like. My hits. brain was going to ska. My brain goes to ska when I hear punk because that's the kind of punk I enjoy. Yeah. I was thinking something a little bit heavier, almost leaning on like Maylene and the Sons of Disaster, which is like metal and country at the same time. Uh, hardcore Not bad, country. just weird, just weird. Yeah, they're a fantastic fucking band, by the way. Um, yeah. What makes this particular funny is that immediately after he writes, I think I have already mentioned to you that a uh, bullock driver of ours, as uh, 1864, came in one day with the same story, but he was a notorious liar. Wait, okay. Like <laughs> he he's saying that also somebody had the exact same sighting also they're just a little fucking liar but they have the same exact story uh and so it he's, came before this one yeah it came before this and so he's almost discrediting himself as soon as he s- tries to posit that there's some kind of new tiger yeah it sounds pretty bad if i'm not, I'm not gonna lie to you yeah uh and, and so, i mean he he wrote these people he regurgitated a story from the town bullshitter and added, it sounds kind of sketchy. I got it from a bullshit teller called Dave. And, uh, Basically. Yeah, yeah. In 1896, an Atherton farmer named Mr. French had been losing calves, sheep, and goats to some mystery creature that raided his property day and night. Despite That's just searches, Carlos. That's just Carlos? Oh, Woods Carlos? Carlos in the woods? Carlos in the woods, yeah. Carlos he, in the he, woods. Carlos in the woods. He lives off of calves and sheep, but yeah, just let him have it because he he also brings a bountiful harvest the next year. So like we just let him do it. He trains them for his his farm based circus. But oh no, an, they die. An ethical circus. Oh no, they die. No, they die. He eats them. 
Oh, man. But not ethically. He's very unethical about the way that he takes out animals. <laughs> but but he does give us a good harvest, so we look that, the other way. That reminds me of a joke I told once that I, I thought was funny, and but I got a very bad reaction to it. But I thought people would think it was a joke, but it turns out they didn't. Um, and that is that I said something about, like, uh, my, you know, my cat hasn't been re- doing too well, really. Like, her nose is, it's cold and wet all the time, and she keeps making this, like, sound. So, like, she's really sick, and uh, I, had to, I had to put her down, so I had to take her out back and hang her. So. What? <laughs> the joke was that the cat wasn't sick, and then I hanged it instead of having it put down by a vet. But that, p- p- that it didn't go the way I thought it was going to go when I told it. Uh, what room did you tell that to? Like, because that it's... also, you got to I... read the room on a joke like that. Yeah, le- um, there's really no good way to segue into that joke. So it wasn't like a smooth transition. Like, oh, speaking of which. <laughs> <laughs> Knock, knock. What? Dead cat. (laughs) (laughs) Like, I always thought that would be funny, but I can't find a way to make it so. Um. (laughs) I mean, it it is a, it is a, uh, it's a joke that has, like, historical roots in other jokes. So, like, that, that, that whole thing of, like, oh, this isn't actually a problem, but I'm pretending it's a problem. That's a, that's, like, a tried and true staple of telling jokes. Yeah, so. but then in the end, you murder an animal. And I thought that was the funny bit. <laughs> See, that that's not the funny bit to me. The funny bit is the bit where you're you're subverting expectations with, in regards to, like, I thought it was going to, like, incept it, double subvert it. Like, oh, it's not sick, but you're s- saying it is. But then also, I, like, uh, you're going to get it p- put down, but then you don't put it down. You do it in, a like, a medieval way. I, I feel like hanging... Brandon is the problem. I think that's yeah. the problem because that's that that's a very like just imagining that happening to a cat is very upsetting to me. And like I think seppoku. it takes you out of the joke a little bit. What? Seppoku. Now that would be funny. Okay, I'll I'll change it to the the uh, something ashamed of the cat seppoku. Um <laughs> if the cat if the cat committed seppuku <laughs> Uh, that would be more, and I butchered that. Um, that there's something comedic in that because then you have to imagine a cat holding a a, a samurai sword. Yeah, um, well, in the cat's case, like a sharpened letter opener, so that no, the no, scale no, works no, out. No, 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 no. It would be a full on samurai sword. That's where oh. the humor comes in. That's that's the humor. Yes. It's, okay. Even though it's still about a cat gutting itself ritualistically. Um, it was doing it with a sword. <laughs> oh, despite this the has searches. been terrible jokes. Oh yeah, the well podcast. these are jokes that that no that nobody thinks is funny. The podcast, despite searches. I mean that, that yeah. that's pretty much how you describe that's that's the description of this podcast in general. Yeah, true. Uh, despite searches with cattle dogs, he had been unsuccessful in finding the carnivore. Also, cattle dogs. I th- I'm picturing a dog suckling at the teat of a cow, uh, which left telltale large paw prints in muddy patches around his property, uh, which lay on the edge of a dense scrub. Uh, one day, from his kitchen window, he observed a strange animal, a little larger than a fully grown German shepherd uh, with grayish colored fur and darker uh, colored body stripes and a dash across the paddock barely uh, 50 feet, which is 15.24 meters from his window. Do the Australians use the metric or imperial system? Uh, is, I, I mean... He's saying 50 feet, but in my mind, I thought they were they were metric for some reason. Um, They use the metric system for most quantities. Except for spooky animal sightings. Gotcha. Probably except for, for spooky animal sightings. Anyway, I mean, the- sp- spooky spooky animal sightings are usually the thing. Also, sometimes distances are weird because sometimes people don't use meters for distances. Like I think in Britain they use miles per hour, but I could be wrong. Hmm. Okay. Um, that, uh, 
I want to put like a huge like warning sign of John's not sure about that. John's never oh, been to Britain. There's a string of asterisks on either side of that sentence. <laughs> oh yes, yes. Or asterisks? Is it asterisks or asterisks? Uh, hmm. I never. I never had to I, think I, about it. <laughs> never had to think about it. Anyway, uh, this strange creature. UK uh, does that. UK uses miles per hour. Oh, nice. Yeah. Um, it, it pounced on a calf and grabbed it by the throat. By the time Tom grabbed his rifle and dashed outside, the animal was gone. Uh, looking towards the scrub in the direction from where it had uh, first appeared, he saw the powerful beast dragging its kill towards the trees uh, with his two teenage sons, who I think are probably now scarred for life. Um, he was soon uh, in the scrub in pursuit of the animal. Entering well, a clearing... Found the- out. They saw the they creature. They just found out something that will make them super happy for the rest of their life. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they, there's, they saw... no, there's no in between. There is no in between. Uh, they saw the creature perched in a gum tree limb uh, some 20 feet off the ground where it had wedged the calf's body between the trunk and the limb, which makes me wholly rethink cu- the Kookaburra song. <laughs> uh, also, drop bears. Also, drop bears. Um, But this. this... So uh, this sounds an awful lot like just a normal tiger action, what he's there... describing. Yeah, so no, that no, sounds no, like a this, regular this tiger. Is, this, this is like a regular tiger's like behavior. Their MO is kind of kill bringing a tree, or like a leopard or, or a big cat. A lot of big cats like to bring things into trees. Cheetahs don't, yeah. but that's they, because that's cheetahs are classy motherfuckers. Kind but of why I think thing. they call them uh, like – the Tasmanian tiger and the Queensland tigers because they both have stripes but also may have similar uh, activities like carrying their kills into a tree. Tigers, by the way, don't just kill because they're hungry. They do it for fun. That's uh, that's a fun fact for you. They're just kind of murder cats. Uh, All cats are murder cats, to be honest. That's true. A Tom lot of re- cats kill for fun. Yeah, my cats can't. There was a mouse once, but they I felt really bad for the mouse because they weren't killing it. They were just, like, batting it around. Like, they, they weren't even, like, they didn't have their claws out. They were just, like, slapping the shit out of this mouse. See, so they I, were just friends with the mouse. And the, the, the problem is that I... So I caught the mouse in a little box and took it outside, set it free. Guess what happens? Guess who comes back the next day? Same mouse. And I'm like, mouse. Brandon, your cats are just friends with the mouse. Or that mouse has a thing for getting picked. No, they were slapping the shit out of it. <laughs> it felt bad cat, for him. I think I think that mouse was paying your cats in catnip to do that. May, may it, oh, he's into it. He has a fetish. He's into it. That cat was into it. That's why oh. he came back. Mo, yeah. mo, that, that that mouse was into it. That's that's why you. That's why mice come back to places because there's something that they're getting out of it. That explains right? the little tiny ball gag and leather mask. <laughs> yeah, that was a weird thing to find, wasn't it? Yeah, it was so weird. In the world's tiniest dick cage. <laughs> uh, Tom raised his rifle oh, no. and was brought the, the animals brought down in a single shot. <laughs> Extremestrains.com. Follow them on Twitter. I do. Oh, no. it, it makes it awkward in waiting rooms. Um Tom later skinned the animal, but it was uh, the eventual fate of the hide. Uh, it's it's not known, so nobody knows where the skinned hide went. Uh, uh, that's that's typical. Given all evidence eventually goes away, nobody knows where it is. That's how cryptids work. Um, mm-hmm. Given the description of the creature and knowing that the Tasmanian tiger was still around at the time, I'm more inclined to believe that this was a thylacine than a thylacoleo. I mean, uh, I don't think thylacines... Th- were thylacines on the mainland of... Uh, uh, of uh, Australia? Um, I think they were on the mainland. Oh, I yeah, they be- were. Yeah. They were on the Australian mainland. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. I didn't know that. Um, I would, Yeah, they just called shit Tasmanian for no reason. Hmm. Why did they call it Tasmanian, then? My guess is that how, like, everyone thinks all crazy shit is in Australia. If you're in Australia and you see some crazy shit, then you just call it Tasmanian. 
Um, I would like to point out that there are many sightings in him. I'm omitting most of them for the ones I found uh, funniest or more convincing. Um, most of those I'm omitting seem to be more like a thylacine or made, just made up or like could be literally any predator on Earth um, because Australia is the world's Alola. Uh, uh, Brandon. Yes. Brandon. The world's Alola is Hawaii. That f- Aloha. I stand corrected. It's the Aloha region, basically. Yeah. Which is Hawaii. It's explicitly Hawaii. That's why it's a bunch of islands. It's explicitly Hawaii, and you're more <laughs> qualified than most people to correct me on Pokemon references. <laughs> I, there's a chance that I will be the most qualified person to speak about Pokemon in an academic sense, even, in the world. Yeah, yeah. Which is so, horrifying. It's both terrifying and, like, the, the the circle will eventually be complete. Eventually, one day. But yeah, yeah no, no. Uh, they still haven't made, they still haven't made Pokemon Murder Kill version, which is, that's, that's going to be uh, oh, Australia. Oh, shit. Yeah, they're going to come out with the hardcore Pokemon in 2023 where um, some mechanics go back to, like, original red versus blue where, like, you can't just save, like, whenever you want. Like, you got to... And then the other thing is um, you actually get to see the, 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 the intestines come out of the bellies of your opponents once you win. Uh, Brandon, have you played red and blue in a while? Uh, No. Yeah, you could save anywhere. That was kind of part of the reason why the game was so popular is because it was a really it was really oh, well, well engineered for You, you know uh, what my head was going to is that the the battles were much longer at least in yes. my memory. Where like if you're playing the game in a car, there was a, a l- frequent like mom, dad, I can't I have to finish this battle right now be- because I can't save during a battle and then I'll just lose yeah. all the progress from my last save up until now. There's a lot of Yeah, that. that's that's fair. the 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 battles in Pokemon Red and Blue were really slow. The game as a whole was a lot slower, um, because yes. of the way that they did a lot of things. That's why I recommend if you play Pokemon Red and Blue, you play it on an emulator, um, because then you can speed shit up. Yeah, there's a a reason why the all new Pokemon games immediately let you run and give you a bicycle. Yeah, a little bit. Like little bit. from almost the very start. You know what the worst part is? In Pokemon Red and Blue, the bicycle wasn't even uh, a hot item. Like you couldn't you couldn't set it to select. You had to select it from the menu. And yes. not only that, but your bag had limited space. Your, and your yeah. PC had limited space for items. So there was a finite number of different item types that you could have in the game. That's fucking now that you say that, that's that's very, very true. The All Star made you play at least a third of the full game, almost half, before you could move faster than a slow walk. Yeah, I played it. I played through it recently. I played it on an emulator because I knew how terribly slow the game is. I did get all 151, and then my Pokedex glitched out literally the second that I did that. So. <laughs> That's because you're you. <laughs> Yeah, pretty much. The emulator one. Who's playing? Oh, uh, okay. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. It's John. It's John. We got to fuck something up somehow. Yeah. So jumping past the time when the thylacine was still alive, zoologist Gary Ulpit saw a creature in 1969 as follows. Nice. nice. Oh, we went for... Uh, I can't say it because it's like close to my house, but I walked past a place and went, nice. Um... At about 11 p.m., as I traveled south through long stretches of darkened forest with very little other traffic, I observed a large carnivorous mammal suddenly cross the road directly in front of my vehicle. Um, That's interesting. It's interesting that, I guess he's a zoologist, so he would say that, but like, I usually, whenever I see an animal, I don't think, that's a large carnivorous animal. I don't... yeah, I don't have that same thought. But and, I, and I guess he's a zoologist, so I, I'll give him a pass on it. By his carnivorous comment, my guess is maybe he noted the eyes weren't on the side of its head, but forward-facing, and uh, maybe that's, some that's some similar too. features. Um, it emerged about thirty feeters, feeters, thirty meters in front of my car on the side of the road, uh, the left hand or eastern side, 
So I like that he's actually throwing in some like actual amount of detail. Uh, and you saw but, its head, yeah. But 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 here's the problem with that. Detail doesn't mean that it's true. Detail um, doesn't mean that it's true. Liars liars will put a lot of detail in their stories. So because I, they I like think he, it gives he's them saying more credibility. I pulled onto the left hand side of the road, which, which is a believable amount of detail. But if he said I pulled onto the le- the left hand side of the road, I know that because I remember there was a quarter at my tire when I opened the door. Like if you throw it in some like other shit to really drive it home, he's just saying left hand side. Uh, enough, but I'm just I'm making the point that detail that's a foul that is a logical foul. Oh yeah, the the, the the more detail, the the less like yeah. Yeah, I think we've talked about who we definitely talked about that at least once. Yeah, but I want to bring it up again because yeah, he it's said kind uh, of the the number one thing for cryptid stories. Yeah, uh, I saw its head shaped something like a mastiff dog protrude from the vegetation, and I watched it walk across the grassy road, uh, verge to the bitumen, which I don't know what the fuck that is. Um, I applied the brake, not wanting to hit what at first I thought must be a dog, which, good dis- good choice. <laughs> Don't uh, hit the brake. Uh, then I accelerated up to it when I realized that it was not a dog. It stood approximately 60 centimeters at the shoulders and had a body length of about 75 centimeters and a tail of the same length. The snout That's incredibly pro- small. It's, um, I didn't put the Imperial conversion in there, so I've got a rough so guess. So 75, me- 75 centimeters is less than a meter, which is three feet, roughly. Yeah, so it's, it's a little, um, a little boy. Yeah, also, uh, bitumen is asphalt. Oh, did you know it's that, just, or did you look that up? I looked it up. Oh, okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, the snout protruded from the head with a small pricked ears. It had a powerfully built body covered in uh, brindled, somewhat thick fur with indistinct stripes appearing beneath the thinner uh, black outer coat. The fore and hind legs were about the same size, which is a little bit different from our initial description. Um, the rump and hind legs hind legs appeared reasonably powerful and uh, what was distinctively, distinctly noticeable was a marsupial-like wadding gait uh, particularly caught my attention. So that's something that I think only an Australian zoologist would pick up on. Is like, it walks like a marsupial. And, well, it, ha- and it was thick. He said it was a th- it was, thick-ass animal. It is thick. The description Three is thick. Um, but like with the exception of the possum, the only place that there are marsupials is Australia. So like... Oh, uh, yeah, you got me there. True. Like, it is going to be a thing that an Australian uh, yeah. zoologist is more likely to specialize in. And, and probably just any Australian as compared to anybody else that doesn't live near marsupials. I mean, how many times have you seen a, a, a possum walk around? Usually it's playing dead if you see one at all. Yeah, I've never seen a possum in real life. <laughs> at least that I can think of. Fair enough. Um... Let's. Uh, it's robust form, muscled legs, <gasps> large feet. Um, indicated to me that it was, that was unnecessarily a- sexual, Brandon. <laughs> um, indicated to me that it, uh, it was adapted to te- terrestrial locomotion along with tree climbing abilities. Um, it had a long, straight, thickly furred tail with six bands or stripes across it, and the tail did not wag from side to side as it walked across the road, so it clearly wasn't happy and needed belly rubs. Uh, or my... it needed belly rubs. Yes. When my but cart... also, six bands, is uh, that's that's a detail that's a little too specific, I want to point out. Yeah, I buy it. That is a little bit too... I, if I saw some... Like, if I saw a kangaroo cross the street, at my, I wouldn't... If it had a color pattern on it, I wouldn't I just, I'd go, oh, fuck, that's a kangaroo. I wouldn't go, let's count the freaking uh, um, uh, 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 Jolly Rogers on its tail. Um, when my car closely approached the strange animal, it raised the hairs on its tail. Uh, as a dog may raise its tackles when disturbed, as if it was attempting to make itself look larger. This very distinctive banded tail was uh, the last I saw of the animal as it disappeared into the th- Thick vegetation on the western side of the road. Uh, At no time 
did it look at my closely approaching vehicle or increase its speed as it crossed the road? That would annoy me. I get annoyed whenever there's an animal crossing the road without a little bit of giddy up in it. Whether you're a cat, you're a squirrel, I don't care. Turtles are the worst. Humans. Fucking humans, like, crossing the road. Even, especially if you're jaywalking, like, hustle. Put some Fair. hustle if, into it. If you jaywalk, you need to, like, run. I'm sorry. Like, run. Oh, yeah. Like, like we all do it. And jaywalking laws are really just there to hit minorities, to be totally honest. Or people that are less desirable. I don't know. Cops. I know if you're crossing the road, I typically don't slow down. Like I, I'll get, I get as close as I can without hitting people. Brandon, that, that might end up in you murdering a human. I also do that to cars if I'm trying to turn, but they're driving slow and I have to wait to them. I'll start turning before they pass me so I can get as close to their rear bumper as possible. Yeah, you might accidentally commit a manslaughter one of these days if you keep. It's this up. never backfired. To that, to this point. No. Like that's that's kind of the point. Uh everything at a certain point something eventually might fail and when it fails that's when things happen that are bad. Nah, never. It works every time except the time that it didn't. There's but it's never not worked. That's that is a fallacy right there. It's never not the never not nothing never done bad happened. I don't know how many negatives were in that sentence. It's the the exact right amount. Yeah, I don't believe that. <laughs> it's the exact right amount of uh, negatives. Uh, okay. This account, I uh, I believe, may have happened, albeit you know more likely a thylacine. What year did I say this was? Maybe not. Am I uh, lying? Eighteen in nineteen sixty nine. So probably yeah, because they were they were they they were hunted to extinction. That's if you're gonna buy in that there's potentially a thylacine still around, then it's more likely that than the Queensland tiger. I think, but I I. I don't know. I think he definitely it's, it's saw something. It's statistically more likely to be a thylacine. Like, this kind of goes our logarithmic curve thing that we were talking about at the yeah. top of the episode. It's more it's, likely to be a thylacine than the Queensland tiger, but I think even more likely to be an animal not seen clearly while driving than either the Queensland tiger or the thylacine. Yeah, it's also very small. I want to point out again, that is a small animal. That's like, that could practically be a cat almost, like a big cat. It's just a baby. Yeah. That almost describes one of my cats. <laughs> kind of. Uh, he seems reputable. A little too tall. A little too tall, though. Too tall, yeah. He, he seems reputable. And uh, this is not long after the last captive thylacine died in captivity. Uh, the thylacine lived a lifespan up to seven years in the wild, meaning a small group that wisened up to the dangers of humans would have uh, had to live about four and a half generations for this to happen. Um this, uh, what I think is improbable, is not a hundred percent. Like that, that's not something I would completely shut down. Yeah, well, it's 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 like we were saying. It's the the whole like uh, the farther away you get, the more generations that theoretically go through, yeah. the less likely that this thing still lives. If it, it it's by areas. no means a probable occurrence. Yeah, it's 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 a statistically unlikely thing, yeah. but it's also more reasonable than something from something that is from prehistory. Uh, yeah, doing things like and being around, it's more likely than that. That is yes. that we've only seen a handful of times. So I, I, it's one of those deals. Uh, let's see. In 2002, a family saw the following. Driving slowly down uh, the... Ran- I don't know if it was Rangi or Rangi. I'm going to go with Rangi. Uh, the Rangi's right. lights uh, and spots on. Uh, one I, child... I, I- I think yep. it's I think it's like a a, a la- like a ranger like a ranger like a oh like, like a rangy gotcha that makes sense like, like it's a car I think it's a car oh okay driving slowly with the rangy's lights on yep like you're a right Range Rover I think it's a Range Rover like I literally think it's a Range Rover oh right? that's uh, an a- like a, an effect of just how yeah, they speak yeah because uh, I looked up rangy car um and rangy care is something that's on the Land Rover oh okay. Site. So then a family uh, so was driving in a, a, a Range Rover. Bush Rangey. It's a br- Bush Rangey. It's an Australian car. Oh, nice. All right. 
The rangey's lights uh, and spots on, so I guess that must mean bush cars got to have spotlights. Uh, one child yeah. commented that something was coming down the hill uh, towards the road as he could see uh, the undergrowth moving around. Thinking it might be a kangaroo or a wombat, I slowed down. The thing came off the hillside and got onto the road. My first thought was that it looked like a quoll on steroids. Uh, it was so big. It was uniformly <laughs> <laughs> it was uniformly hey, dark in color. Yeah. It's it's a callback, man. It's a callback to the, the, the Thylos Leo's uh, steroids. Yeah, it is. Tiny uh, balls. Tiny, tiny balls. About 80 centimeters at the shoulder and about 1.5 meters from nose to tail. The head had the same sort of stub nose like the Tasmanian devil uh, with the same sort of heavy jaws and a long tail like a kangaroo, which it seemed uh, to be using for balancing or steering. It didn't move about like cats. It looked fairly rigid and slightly curved. The thing looked large and powerfully built, but... um, I had a quite graceful, almost arrogant stride to it. I stopped. <laughs> it looked in the middle of the road, and uh, our lights turned and looked at us for about 30 seconds and sauntered and sashayed across the other side of the road where it went down Sassy. a gully and drove... Uh, uh, whatever, they're just talking about the spotlights, and they drove and fucking animal followed the creek for about 20 meters. Um... They do describe the smell uh, was pretty unspeakable, like rotting flesh, and I don't know why mystery animals have to be stinky. Yeah, I mean, it, it also could literally be that if it's like a scavenger or something like that that they're dealing oh, with, true. it could just be the smell. I, I don't know. There's there's a lot of stuff, and like that's a that's a frequent thing. Like it is just a thing that happens in those those moments, and like. It, there's so many reasons it could smell like rotting flesh. Like there could also be a dead animal nearby. Yeah. Like, and they also like, said it's near like a Creek. So there could just be rotting f- animals at the side of the Creek. Yeah. There's a lot of things that it could be because something I do want to point out is that while a lot of people describe bad smelling animals, do you, it has to smell so strong to smell from any sort of a distance. Like, my cat stinks. Scully smells like hot garbage, but only when she's rubbing up against you. Like, she's got to be up on your face to smell that cat. Yeah, but, like, decay is really, like, really, really bad. Your cat is not, your cat is not eating decayed animals. No, but she does have just a rotten ass mouth. Well, that's a whole other thing. That's just being a cat. (laughs) Yeah. Um, get her, get her some of them like greeny treats. She's got, she eats special dental food because like her teeth were just falling out. She's a like a, a homeless junkyard cat that I took, so like there's she's gonna well, come no. with some defects. She's explicitly a junkyard cat. Both of those cats are explicit du- junkyard cats, literal yeah. junkyard cats. They're actual junkyard cats. <laughs> Don't worry though, if if an explosion ever happens, they'll walk away from it perfectly fine. Oh yeah, if I've learned. Anything from It's Always Sunny. <laughs> a junkyard cat is not to be fucked with. No. No, unless you're a mouse and you're my cats, then you, yes, you can fuck with them because they well, no, won't no, no. kill you. <laughs> no, no, they're not to be fucked with in that case either because you're just going to be batted around forever. Yeah, it's just, they, it's just in it for the ball torture. <laughs> Uh, now a quoll does look like the Queensland tiger, uh, like if it was a squirrel and, uh, it was a marsupial. There is a creature called the singleton giant quoll, uh, that is, uh, posited to be a thylacolio, and there's a $1,000 reward for a good, uh, photograph of it. Jeez, that's a, that's a tantalizing offer. That, it is, it, it is a tantalizing, tantalizing offer. No, I'm, um, I'm being facetious, Brandon, because... Well, like, if I lived I there and I had a photo like, camera, I would wander around in the woods and take some blurry pictures and try to get a grand out of a guy. Yeah, but, like, there's a there's a diminishing return value. There's, like, yeah, diminishing true. returns on that because, like, at a certain point, you're going to be working more than a job trying to find that thing. That yeah, don't, don't spend more than, like, a couple of weekends looking for it, I guess. 
Like, I mean, if you're if you're like walking around and you see something and take a picture of it, that's fine. But like, don't make it your mission. Yeah. Uh, usually, usually these things become not worth it when it's like the thing you're trying to do. Like you're trying to earn that money. Like at that point, just like. Oh, if it trends, sign up on it, Uber or something like that, yeah. you probably make that money quicker. When it pivots from fun to like a thing you're doing just for the money, yeah, yeah. Um, however, this seems like the Wakaleo, a smaller relative to the Thylakleo with spots. Um, basically, there are like four pretty similar extinct animals that translate to some Latin version of tiger or lion that people think could still be around. And given how recently they were declared extinct, while I don't believe these are around, I can't fully poo-poo some people who might. Yeah, uh, I mean, that's that's so... These type of mammalian, like, sightings are harder to debunk a little bit. This kind. This this particular kind. Um, because it's not like a Bigfoot where it's an... It would need, like, a ludicrous amount to hide, right? Yeah. Like, the, the, the statistical likelihood of a Bigfoot existing is basically zero. Because there's just too many factors at play. These guys, uh, I don't think the Thylaleo is likely. And that's because it's literally a prehistoric creature. Um so just speaking in that terms, it's unlikely, but it is possible for some species of marsupial that was related to a thylacinth or Tasmanian tiger, which is yep. probably the easier way for me to pronounce it. It is possible that that something related to that existed. Yeah. Um, like it, and it's I, not absolutely crazy. Um, I just, it's just really unlikely. Numbers. Yeah. It's it, really unlikely. We're, we're, currently up to 12 generations so like the, the more time goes the less likely that is but like you know a, a, a it, it, not that long ago it wouldn't be crazy and it's still kind of like not nah, eh. we're approaching it, like it's come on increasing, dude it's yeah. increasingly more like eh, this is probably not likely but yeah. it is also still like it, it, it there is a small glimmer that this thing is possible. Like I'm not entirely positive that there are no, like I can't say in good faith that there are no Tasmanian tigers left. Yeah. It, it's, it's like at 12 generations. We're at the point where like someone you it, could be like, come on, dude. But then at the same time, um, if someone, if someone said my grandfather saw one, it's a hundred percent possible. His grandfather pet one. That's more likely. That's more yeah. likely to me. And, like, like the other thing, too, is, you know, people always mention the coelacanth, right? Mm -hmm. When we talk about cryptids and stuff like that. And that's fair. Like, the coelacanth is an actually fairly large creature that was discovered to not, to, to not be extinct. But that's also just because we weren't, like, fishing in the air. We weren't using, doing the type of fishing that we needed to do to find one. Yeah, right? we weren't looking for it, which is why I'm and, starting a GoFundMe to make the world's Longest sinking lure, because I'm going to catch me a Kraken. Uh, okay. Sure. Because, <laughs> like, you do realize that even if the Kraken, like, I mean, there is, what is it, Humboldt squid or whatever, the giant squid. There's, like, a huge fucking squid that does exist. Yeah. Um, once it reaches the surface, it basically looks like nothing because yeah. of pressure differentials. Like oh yeah, the like blobfish, the blobfish. The blobfish <laughs> doesn't look like that normally. It actually no. looks pretty dope normally. That's a blobfish that literally was tortured to death. Oh yeah. So just just every time you see that, just remember that. That's they're they're. It was not alive when that photo was taken. They're very actually exploded. <laughs> yeah. Like, if you went to a pre well a vacuum chamber and it just like sucked your body until you looked like the Michelin Man. Yeah, the blobfish yeah. actually looks more like a. It kind of looks more like a pufferfish. Um, yeah. Down like down low, but when it comes up, it kind of just it gets that like human face. Yep. 
Uh, the most recently claimed sighting was in 2012, when Mel McMillan claims to have seen one crossing of the road as she drove. She claims it crossed a meter in front of her car and had stripes. However, it also had stripes on its face. Um, this was found on her YouTube channel, which consists of five videos, four of which are between one and two minutes long, uh, appearing to be relatives talking about alien big cats. Yeah. I also, mean, like, non-convincingly, like, she told them, like, hey, you talk about this. So, like, this, that's also another factor that comes into play in these types of stories. Um, alien big cats, given the existence of zoos, are feasible. Yes. Like, they're not impossibilities. Also, especially in America, uh, if you've watched Tiger King, oh, we yeah. have more we have more big cats in captivity than are in the wild in America. And like privately held. Yeah. Um <laughs> privately owned, which means it can become expensive, so you just let that expense let it go. roam. Like, I mean, it's not going to last super long, or it'll, like... I mean, when the neighbor's dogs start going missing. Yeah, it'll become very obvious that it's in the area, um, because they are apex predators that won't have competition. Yeah. Because um, that is that is one thing that we have in America. Um, a lot of the apex predators are gone now. Uh, that pose like serious threats to all wildlife. That's part of the reason why deer are such a big problem and why we need to have a hunting season for them. Um, like, cause like we've got what in our area, we've got coyotes, foxes, bears, but they're less, they're more omnivores and they just are opportunistic feeders. Yep. Um, and then a few, like a few relatives of like weasels and, badgers and stuff like that that's pretty yeah. much what we've got there's nothing there's nothing like on the scale of a big cat in this area um no i mean although, coyotes but co coyotes are are different yeah so. one, one time my neighbor's boa got out and they told the neighbors um and then also one of the other neighbors had this chihuahua that would yip at like two o'clock in the morning and then it stopped yipping at two o'clock in the morning around time the snake got out and we were kind of hoping that it got the little yippee, um, but it didn't. It turns out they just brought their dog inside and that the snake was hiding inside of their couch. <laughs> Welcome to hell. Yeah. God. Welcome to hell. Yeah. That's, that's, that's a terrible thing you've just, you, you've, in, you've inflicted a terrible curse onto my brain. Yeah. Check check under your 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 couch cushions for any giant couch snakes. snake. Couch snake. Couch snake coming next fall. Probably <laughs> at this rate. Likely. I mean, twenty twenty one is shaping up to be quite a banner year already. So I mean, yeah, we got surprised. those uh, the flying spiders. We've got the. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I didn't catch the, the flying spider one, and I don't really want to hear anything about it. Oh, it's just listing things that would scare me. That's that, fair. That's it. Just, I, don't, I, don't, I don't like flying spiders. Are they real? No. Should they be? No. They kind of are, if I've learned anything from Charlotte's Web. Well, they can make parachutes. Yeah, but that's like flying. I guess. That's, that's functionally flying. Yeah, you just you can't really control, like... Why do you uh, think Spider-Man had the wings? Because spiders fly. Spider-Man didn't have wings. Spider-Man explicitly had wings. In his first appearance, look up Spider-Man. Uh, oh, shit. It? He's got yeah. like the glides. Yeah, he's got wings. Huh. Yeah, I only saw yeah, the Tobey his... Maguire Spider-Man movies, but those weren't any good. You also saw the Amazing Spider-Man movies. I saw, I saw the Amazing Spider. Well, I saw the first Amazing Spider-Man. That one was actually good. The Tobey Maguire's I didn't like. The other kids was Andrew Garfield. I liked him. Yeah, and then now the new ones are even better. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Holland. Tom Holland. Tom Holland. He looks good too. Good. I just don't like Tobey Maguire in anything. Tobey Maguire was the bet was the single best Peter Parker though. Was he? It Yes. 
he was the most accurate to comic book Peter Parker. Was he? Because I need to pick. Was, yes. was, am I wrong in, in or am, am I misremembering? Like, was Spider Man supposed to be like more fun and like jokey? Because like Spider Man is. Yeah. Spider Man is. Peter Parker is not. Peter Parker is a depressing, sad nerd who uh, is incredibly awkward to be around. At okay. least high school Peter Parker is. But I don't. I don't recall the t- his, his Spider Man being like. In his Spider Man was not joking. Good. Okay. I I want to point out. Tobey Maguire was a great Peter Parker. He was not a great Spider Man. Okay, I'll buy it. I'll, I'll Andrew bite. Garfield was a great Spider-Man. He was not a good Peter Parker. Tom Holland is a great both. Ooh, okay. I'll have to check out some of the newer, the newer uh, Spider-Mans. Homecoming and Far From Home are really good. I recently saw uh, Far From Home. That was phenomenal. So nice. Although people do critique it because it's not, it doesn't really. It, it it's more of a palate cleanser movie after. Uh, end zone, uh, end zone, end game. So it's a whole nother thing. Um, but I like it. I like I like lighthearted Spider-Man movies where Uncle Ben doesn't die. Um, Uncle Ben a- had it coming. Yeah, that's a controversial opinion. That's a technical foul. Uncle Ben um, did some war crimes. Okay. Uh. So on that note, this has been our podcast. <laughs> our website is cryptopediacast.com. Our Instagram is at cryptopediacast. Our Twitter is also at cryptopediacast. Uh, if you want to send us a message, you can message us on Twitter, or you can send us an email at cryptopediacast at gmail.com. Um, we have a Patreon. And as always, let's thank our Jackalope level supporters. We've got Clay Sinclair, Marty Von Party, Bird Schneider, Jonathan Shepard, and of course, fuck Andrew Jackson. Uh, we also have a Facebook group, a Discord, and if you enjoy the podcast, be sure to rate and review and subscribe and all that good stuff if you can on the platforms that you use. I know that Spotify doesn't have any kind of rating and reviewing because they they want to just have their podcasters in their 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 like little their little like uh, little shed basically. Um, monster requests and stories are welcome. Uh, there's a backlog, but mostly because they're heavy hitters and, uh, I get anxiety every time I start writing them and then choose to do something different. (laughs) It's fair. You could find me on Instagram at donkey underscore hands. My website is boyerb.com. My email is brandon at cryptopediacast.com and my Twitter is at crypto brandon. On Instagram, I'm at Mew2057. Wow, that was weird. <laughs> at Mew2057. My Twitter is at JF Dunham. My website is johndonnegames.com. And my email is john at cryptopediacast.com. Our art was done by Tom Hill. You can find him on Instagram at Thomas Michael Hill. His website is greatergloryco.com. And his email is tommikehill at gmail.com. <sighs> As always, I'm Sleepy John. I'm Brandon. And things are going to get weird. 